Hi everybody and welcome. I'd like to introduce you to a new brush pack from Corel Painter called Pop Art. And I want to take you through the brushes and how you can incorporate and use them uh, in your illustrations, your design work, and just or to just have a lot of fun with. Um, every once in a while it's just fun to break out some brushes and just explore them and have some fun with them. So let me show you how to get started with these Pop Art brushes. I've got a little illustration open here um, and you've noticed that I've uh, created it on a new layer and the brush that I used to create the illustration is um, a brush called Pop Ink and it is um, perhaps one of my favorite brushes in the grouping. Uh, I'll add a new layer here and basically show you a little bit how it performs. Um, the damping is up pretty high on it, so the smoothing setting. So you can also adjust that if you need to. But it's a very, um, it's, a, it's a brush that you can get some wonderful um, line work with. And uh, I found it uh, lots of fun to work with. Very smooth, very precise. Uh, so you can really uh, explore this brush and have some fun with it. So this brush is called Pop Ink. And it's the actual brush that I used to create this little, um, this little uh, illustration here to get started with. The first brush in the category is called Geopop Dotty. And um, I'm just going to continue to add layers here so you can basically see uh, what I did with the brush and how I used it uh, to create the effects. One of the things you'll want to pay attention to when you're working with these brushes especially for illustrative purposes, is that you'll want to be sure that you're keeping an eye on the color variability of the brush. This particular brush, when I reset it to default settings, you'll notice that the in the color variability option, the hue is set to 50%. So when I start painting with it, I'm going to get a wide variety of colors coming in. And this is uh, part of the beauty of this brush, I think, and the part of the excitement of pop art and creating this effect. So you can see that I'm just using it at different pressures, uh, firm pressure, soft pressure. You're just going to get kind of a small, light brush stroke. And then firmer pressure, you can see how the brush really enlarges and gets uh, much larger overall. Okay, So that one is called Geo Pop Dotty. The next one is halftone, and again, we'll look at the color variability of that brush set to hue. So that means, uh, once again, it's going to be picking up lots of different colors. Uh, let me close the visibility on that and add a new layer so you can see this brush specifically. So firm pressure, and you're going to get a much larger brush stroke, soft pressure, a smaller brush stroke. So you may want to use that in certain places where you want it to be a little more subtle. And if you do not want to work with the hue setting, of course you can always bring that down to 0% and then you're free to pick any color on the color wheel and use that freely as well. Okay, so we'll reset that brush. The next brush we'll take a look at is called Pop Block. And um, I like using this brush a lot just for um, using it to uh, work color into a particular illustration that I'm doing. Um, when we have a reset setting, we know that we can also create a blender with this brush. So if you're working with specific colors, um, and let me work in my this range here and I start to paint in with it. I would use this basic, basically for coloring and adding a little soft edge where I might you know, want a little more painterly quality instead of a um, you know, geometrics and pop art design. Then with the bleed setting at 100% and the reset down to 0%, I can then take that brush and actually do a, a little bit of soft blending with it as well. Okay. 
So the next brush is called Pop Burst, and these are just really fun brushes to work with. And let me add a new layer here. And again, this brush, you'll notice the hue setting is 50%, so that means it's going to be picking up all different colors based upon the colors that you select. Soft pressure, you're going to get a smaller, softer appearance of that stroke, and firm pressure, more saturation. And that was Pop Burst. This one is Pop Daisy. Again, the hue saturation or the hue value is up on this one, so it's going to be bringing in all different um, colors for you. And firm pressure, you're going to get a nice big pop daisy. And then soft pressure, you're going to get a much smaller brush stroke. And again, take the hue down to 0% and you can work with any color that you want. The next brush is called Pop Dots. And we'll set that brush to default. Again, we'll take a look at the color variability. It is set to hue again, so that means it's going to be picking up color. And again, soft pressure, smaller brush size, and firm pressure, nice big blocky pop dots. I like using these for the face and skin, real typical uh, pop art and the designs that were in existing pop art paintings. The next brush is called Pop Dotty. Again, the hue setting is up. Bring it down to zero. And it's just a really nice little uh, string of pop dots. You can use it for uh, necklaces. And again, if you want to change it to just a solid color, just change that hue setting. Okay, that is Pop Dotty. The next one is Pop Flower. And this one is kind of a daisy shape. Again, this one is not set to hue at 50%, so it would mean that you could pick any color you want right off the bat and use that uh, for your colors in your painting or your drawing, your illustration. And if you wanted color variability, just bring that hue setting up and you've got all different colors of flowers. That was Pop Flower. The next one is Pop Hair, and I'd like to show you a painting on how that is used. So this is the pop hair brush, and again, we'll take a look at the hue value on this one. Definitely, if you want to work with different color strands of hair, then you'll want to bring that hue setting up, and what you'll end up getting is lots of different, um, different values and colors. I'm how this works, and you can see that I'm just going to take that brush and add some little hair strands. I'll sample some of these colors out here to the side so you can see these, how this hairbrush works. And uh, it's a really, really nice brush. I think uh, even for portrait work, you'll find it to be a nice hairbrush if you don't want to use it for even this type of thing. <laughs> it's a real versatile brush. And so we've given her hair that look of, you know, lots of different color weaves. If you bring the hue set, set or the hue setting up, again, you can paint with that brush with all different colors. And that may be uh, something you want to try as well. Okay. The next brush was the Pop Ink brush, and I talked a little bit about Pop Ink and how that brush works. Uh, again, it's a beautiful, beautiful, expressive uh, brush to use for inking, illustration, drawing. 
The next brush is called Pop Lashes. And uh, with this brush, you'll notice that the hue setting is also up. And this is a, uh, a really nice little brush for creating um, eyelashes that have color variability within them. Again, if you just want uh, that brush to paint with a solid color, just bring that hue setting down. And that's Pop Lashes. Pop Shader um, is a nice brush as well. It's, let me get a color here, and I'm just going to kind of start to paint in with it. It's set again with the hue setting up, so it's going to give you lots of uh, color variability. Uh, the way I like to use it uh, would be if I was looking to, um, you know, maybe do some shading in certain areas of my illustration, my drawing. And that's how I would use it. You can use it at much larger sizes as well, and it gives you an interesting uh, texture. Okay, that is Pop Shader. The next brush is called Retro Pop. And I'm just going to go ahead and pull some design work in here so you can see how this works. <laughs> and again, it's another fun brush to use. If you want different colors, bring that hue setting up and you'll get a wide variety of color. Lots of fun. Solar Pop. And we'll clear that out and pull in Solar Pop. And another fun dab stencil that you can use. Capture dab for color, illustrative work, pop art work. And that is Solar Pop. The next brush is called Velocity Pop. And with this one, you'll see that it, it, it's set to velocity. If you put firm pressure on it, it's just going to continue to twirl and twirl. Okay? And notice how it's changing color. Soft pressure, and it's just going to continue to twirl, but it will create some nice blending as well. And remember that you can set these to apply dab stencil to where you can pick up perhaps a paper texture and imply that also into the brush stroke. You can see I'm picking up a lovely paper texture. The paper um, intricate tracing. So enjoy this new brush category called Pop Art and have some fun. Take care.